Grab your Bibles and turn with me to the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 15. John 15. I'm going to start reading at verse 9. I'll stop when I'm tired. John 15, 9. As the Father has loved me, these are Jesus' words, as the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because a servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Well, today is Mother's Day. What a joyous occasion for many. It's the time to say thank you to the one who often holds the family together and who often carries the heartache bound up in hope when no one else sees beyond their personal pain. Today offers us a chance to say thank you to the one who brings order out of chaos, who can find the missing sock and the lost homework, the one who remembers how much laundry detergent goes per load. You know what I'm talking about. The one who also knows the reason why some plastics can make it through the microwave and others can't. I haven't mastered that. This is a chance to say thank you to the one who rarely gets thanked for all that she does day in and day out. Thank you and I love you. Now as a pastor, I have to tell you the truth. I ask myself this every year, why does Mother's Day have to fall on a Sunday? You know, I, I, I would understand if Father's Day was on Sunday if it was football season. So I'd really like them to move Father's Day to September. We can do Labor Day in June. Are we cool with that? Okay, so we all the guys say yeah. All right. But see, having Mother's Day on a Sunday puts a lot of pressure on a pastor. I mean, my message has to celebrate this joyous occasion while not ignoring the fact that some may have had a mother experience which was more painful than joyous. What a delicate and difficult commemoration. I mean, how do we pretend that being motherly isn't something that is bestowed with the birth or reception of children under care? What about those who long to be a mother but for some reason are not able to receive this blessing? I mean, what about those mothers whose children are no longer around to send them cards or buy them flowers? What about those who love their mothers but are no longer remembered by their mothers? How do we share joy to those we dearly miss, our departed mothers? Mother's Day. It's a delicate and difficult occasion. Now the truth is, I like sharing the truth. The truth is, no Mother's Day message is completely satisfactory to everyone. I'll admit it. And maybe I'm being overly sensitive. 
mean, maybe it's just a cultural event, a Hallmark holiday. Maybe I shouldn't make such a theological issue out of it. Except I believe that's exactly what we should do. That's exactly what we should do. Because we are followers of Christ. Theology is our understanding of God. Everything influences that. Our understanding of God has been brought into us from all kinds of ways. Where we grew up, our family, the environment, school, work, church. Our theology. I mean, we examine everything we do through our theology. Everything our culture does is all through our theological point of view. We ask ourselves, how is Christ celebrated in this event? How is Christ honored? How is Christ followed in this event? I'm sure the question going through your minds right now is, okay, Pastor Tim, you got us going. So how? How is it? Well, I wouldn't leave you without an answer. This is what I think it is. Jesus said, this is my commandment. This is my commandment to you, that you love one another as I have loved you. But I always ask myself, can we be commanded to love? Well, apparently so. <laughs> apparently so. Jesus did it. And not only did it then, he still does it today. It wasn't a one-time thing, friends. It wasn't just for his disciples to love one another as Jesus showed them how to love. No. Uh -uh. No, it was also for us. Each of us. This is an ongoing, new every morning kind of command. Love. Love one another. This isn't even a love your enemies kind of thing. This is flat out love one another. Enemies are friends. Love them. Love those around you, those close to you, those who need you, those in your care. This is the kind of thing a mother ought to do. Better yet, this is a thing a father ought to do, a sister and a brother ought to do. As a matter of fact, it's what a teacher should do. It's what a real friend would do. It's what a real neighbor would do. It's what a pastor should do or a caregiver. Love one another. In my experience, no one loved me like my mother. Mm -mm. No one sacrificed. No one laid down her life for me like she did. No one else. And it wasn't in some big martyr-like gesture. Uh-uh. But in the daily setting herself aside in favor of those in her care. She was parceling herself out piece by piece each day so that we would have our needs met, our desires catered to. It was never about her, but about those in her care. When my mother became a victim of uh, dementia and Alzheimer's and lost the essence of who she was, where she was, when she was, there was a part of my soul that felt that she was lost to me. Because all those pieces of herself, this is what I thought, all those pieces of herself that she gave away so willingly throughout her life, she now didn't have. I felt that maybe if I returned that love more directly, more frequently, more obviously. There would be more of her left to us now. I don't I know that doesn't make any medical sense. But I ain't a doctor. I'm a pastor. 
but I feel a sense of guilt. And I, I mourn the loss all the same. Now that she's in a care facility, getting care that she needs, no longer suffering, I, I still mourn the loss all the same. But I do have a different perspective. I can accept her daily sacrifice of love as the gift that it was. Did you hear me? The gift. The greater love that no one like her gave me was a gift. Now I gotta tell you, once again I gotta tell you the truth. My mother was not Jesus Christ. That lady could whip on you. Alright? Four boys. Four boys. Between me and my older brother, he was the first. Not even two years. Or right, then two years between the next two. Four of us. All as ornery as you could imagine. Mm, all ornery. And we were poor folk. So she was not like Christ. As a matter of fact, I'm going to tell you how, how we, we changed her. She had four boys. All right. Got divorced from my dad. Remarried. Still not, not an old lady. She went and had more kids, right? Two girls. She, she said, I'm not having more boys. Woo, we broke her. <laughs> oh, goodness. But she wasn't Jesus. I understand that. But she was a disciple. A follower of the one who told her to love like that. And she did her best. She did her best. And that's all any of us can do. Do our best to love. Loving is who we are. Loving in a way that lays down our lives for those we love. Loving in a way that honors God and the commandments of God. Loving that is a response to the love that we've received. Maybe from mothers or fathers, maybe from spouses or partners, from brothers or sisters of blood, and brothers and sisters in Christ. But even if we weren't loved by any of these types of folks, we have been loved by God. Did you hear me, church? We have been loved by God. In the definitive sacrificial act of His Son, Jesus. Which means that all the loving that we are able to do out of ourselves is in response. My friends, we've already been loved. We've already been loved. All we can do is respond. So I'm telling you this today. I'm telling you to do this today and always respond with more loving to everything. To everything. Every day. Respond with more love. With greater love. Amen. Communion Sunday, so I have to do a short message. I'm going to make you do something I don't often do. I'm going to make you uh, grab your.